Hi everyone, I'm your host, Dr. Terry Haddad, Vice President of Community Initiatives at Community Services for Children. Welcome to the Parent Project Podcast. This work stems from our vision for an engaged community where every child thrives and every family succeeds. CSC has been serving families for over 50 years, and we know that parenting can be hard. We're inviting local doctors, teachers, counselors, social workers, and other experts to provide perspectives to help parents maneuver the sometimes challenging role of parenting. I'm delighted to welcome Erin Barron uh, back to talk to us today. She's been a nurse for 20 years. She's worked with inpatients, outpatients, specialty, and emergency pediatrics for 15 years. She's been with the Health Bureau for the last five years, working as the clinical services manager in areas such as maternal child health, vaccines, and in treatment of communicable diseases. She holds a master's degree in healthcare administration. Welcome back, Erin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're thrilled to have you, and we understand you're going to talk to us about summer safety today. So what do parents need to know about keeping their children safe this summer? So the first thing for summer safety to be aware of is parents should learn CPR. Uh, That's a general reminder, um, obviously helps all year long. Uh, Knowing CPR is, you know, a first step in safety for a family, for adults and for children. So I would suggest parents finding a local CPR uh, class provider. The American Heart Association often offers uh, bystander CPR. So parents are aware of how to perform CPR if they need to. The first thing that's uh, super important that we think about during the summer is water safety. Drowning is the single leading cause of death in children ages one to four, um, and a top cause for teens as well, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. So uh, the number one rule is proper adult supervision at all times. Um, This should never be a teenager. This should be adults who are able able to keep their eyes on the children um, at all times. And this includes when you're in a home that has a pool that you're not currently using. Little kids are very curious. Um, They are quiet and drowning is a silent uh, incident and they are able to slip away and get to areas of water like pools when they are not supposed to be. At the pool itself, having an adult assigned to be the water watcher is a great way to uh, help ensure supervision of children. So in my family, we actually had like a little button for my mom's pool that said water watcher, and their job is completely keeping their eyes on the water at all times. The other thing to remember is we do have barbecues, we have picnics, graduation parties. Um, Those people who are watching the water should not be under the influence of any alcohol or certainly any drugs uh, so that they are able to safely watch children. If you have a little child, um, being in the water with them, able to touch them uh, within arm's length of them is a good way to keep them safe. It also makes kids feel more secure in the water, and then you can be watching what's going on. So, and then if you're at a body of water, like a lake, a creek, children should be wearing uh, Coast Guard approved life jackets, whether they're in the water or in the area around the water playing. It's the best way to keep them safe. You can tell if they're Coast Guard approved by the labels on the life jackets. It should say that they are. And then finally, I would say Kids really should start taking swimming lessons as early as you can, Um, teaching kids water, the dangers of water, ways to stay safe around water, how to float. Those are all ways that we can help keep kids safe when they're attempting to play in or around water in the summer. Great advice, Erin. I like the idea of a water watcher and really taking turns. Um, Kids are quick, really important to be safe. They are quick. And nobody hears drowning. It is is a silent um, incident, like I said. So you won't hear a call for help. You won't hear anything. And if you're at a loud party and there's not a water watcher and a child falls in water, you're not likely to hear it. Well, thank you for the great advice. And I think it says you also want to talk about bike safety. Yeah, so everybody likes to get out on their bikes. It's great exercise in the summertime. Um, We just want to make sure that um, we're doing everything we can to stay safe. Usually, um, 
most of the one third of actually the ER visits uh, are attributed to bike accidents in ages 10 to 24 years. So those are our normal users of bikes. They also can be uh, the group that is the least likely to wear their helmet. So in the state of Pennsylvania, it is a law 12 and under must wear a helmet, whether they are riding the bike, whether they are the passenger behind the parent on the bike or whether they are being towed uh, on that bike. So they all have to have helmets on. Um, and even if you're going down your street, people think, oh, I'm just going down the street. I don't need to wear my helmet. Bike accidents happen close to home. So having them wear a helmet at all times is the best way to keep them safe. Um, you know, with younger teens um, and teens who might say, well, my friend doesn't wear a bike helmet, you know, no helmet, no bike. Um, I know that sounds rough, but uh, that really should be the rule. When you're buying a bike for your child, I know people like to hand down bikes and they can ride this bike, but you really need to be careful that you're getting the correct size for your child. If they're riding a bike that is either too big or too small, they're much more likely to fall off of their bike and injure themselves. And then teaching your child the rules of the road. They need to ride with traffic. They need to use hand signals. It's the only way a biker can communicate with cars around them. They don't have turn signals or, you know, that type of thing on them. Obeying stop signs, obeying yield signs, and then wearing bright colors for visibility all the time, even if it is during the day, wearing a bright color so that you're sure that some vehicle, other motor vehicles and motorcycles can see you is very important. Well, I, I like that advice, Erin. I like the no helmet, no bike. No helmet, no bike. No helmet, no bike. Very simple. So um, thank you. Thank you for talking to us about water safety, about bike safety. And um, people, kids spend a lot of time outside. So tell us about what's important about sun safety. So sun exposure can lead to certainly burns of the skin, which can be painful, red, blistering, um, and also have changes in your skin that can lead to skin cancer later down the road. I myself have taken care of kids with second and third degree sunburns, um, very painful, uh, long treatment for those burns. So it's really important that we protect our kids from the sun. So children under six months, kept out of direct sunlight, uh, under canopies, the canopy on the stroller, um, canopies outside. If you're at a sporting event, if you're on the beach, they need to be out of that sunlight. Uh, they also should be wearing SPF clothing if they can, lightweight, and that should cover really down their hands to their wrists. It should also cover feet to the ankles. And they do make swimsuits that have SPF uh, in them to protect babies as well. They should also wear a hat. Faces are very, very susceptible to sunburn, especially under the eyes. And lots of babies don't have a whole lot of hair on top. <laughs> so uh, wearing a hat will also protect their heads. Um, and then you can use SPF if a baby, you have to look at the label, if a baby is over six months but you really need to make sure that you're keeping them out of the sun. This is only if shade is really unavailable and you should really only do it very, very briefly. Um, and it needs to be an SPF that's over 15. Um, but most of the time, those babies really need to be kept out of the sun. There shouldn't be tan lines. There shouldn't be burn lines. Those babies should still with have their nice, pale, creamy skin. <laughs> You know, parents of even toddlers, they they should use sunscreen regularly, correct? And and if they're in and out of the water, how often do they reapply? So every sunscreen, adults, children, needs to be at least 15 SPF. And it needs to be reapplied at least every two hours, but more often if they're in the water. They all should wear sun hats protecting their face. You know, we go to the beach, we go for a whole day. 10 to 2 and up to 4 p.m. is really the the strongest rays of the sun. So you want to be particularly uh, aware during that time of putting sunblock on. And then, you know, water reflects the sun. So that's why we say water at equal more sunblock. The other big thing is to stay hydrated. If for some reason somebody gets sunburned, um, hydration usually will help that. So drinking lots of water when you're out in the sun, um, certainly you'll notice if you're sweating, but staying hydrated will definitely keep um, the help keep the sunburn away. Well, thank you for that. Those are great tips. 
We want uh, our listeners to have a great, happy summers with the kids, but also to stay safe. Anything else we, we should remind our listeners about? So this really is a lead by example. So parents should be doing all of the things that we're telling kids to be doing. Um, so you, parents, again, should know CPR. And when kids are old enough, them learning CPR is a good idea as well. Parents should be wearing bike helmets. I see parents all the time, no helmet with their kid behind them with a helmet. What are you teaching your child? It's like getting in a car and not putting your seatbelt on, but strapping your child into their car seat. We need to do these things for our kids to know they are the safest thing to do. And you need to start teaching them very young that they have to do the sunscreen. They have to wear the sun hat. Um, you know, the earlier you teach them, the better they do. I started putting sunglasses on my daughter when they were probably about a year old uh, and they never took them off when they were older. And somebody asked me, how did you get them to do that? And I said, I started when they were really little. We came outside, sunglasses went on. We need to protect their little eyes. And they keep doing it to this day. So the earlier you start all of these things, the better off kids will be. Um, and, you know, their friends might see them wearing a helmet and maybe the friend will choose to wear the helmet as well. So really starting early is the best thing. Well, thank you for being here, Erin. Thanks for all your advice. And we hope you'll come back again real soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for listening. To learn more about the Parenting Project podcast, Project Child, or Community Services for Children, please visit csceinc.org.